Hello, my name is Justine Tunney and I work on the TensorBoard team. I also do some work on the broader TensorFlow team, particularly occasionally dabbling in like some of these little build system issues we've all had problems with. And I try to make things better. And one of the ways I've tried to make things better was one weekend I whipped up this little script called Blake Filer. By the way, you can ignore this little confidential proprietary thing here. That doesn't apply, it's just part of the slide. This is all open source. Like what you're seeing here, it's on GitHub. You, you can look up my guest and find this Blake Filer PY script. Um, all I'm going to be doing in this video is I'm going to run through some slides, pause if you need more time to read, and then I'm going to like open up a terminal and I'm going to show you that it actually does what you know, the slides say it does. So to start, let's, ha let's have some background. People typically install TensorFlow using pip. <clears throat> when we build these release binaries, they're, they're built to be compatible. They're not built to be fast on the latest and greatest hardware. And that's a problem because most serious users end up having to build this thing from source. And when they do it, they have to install Bazel and a lot of people don't know Bazel. It's a relatively new tool. It requires Java and like all this jazz. I don't blame I don't blame people if they don't want to install it because ideally they shouldn't. Let's look at the way we did things back in the 80s. It was just configure, make, and make install. It was great. It only needed a couple tools. And what made it possible was GNU Auto Tools. Now GNU Auto Tools is probably one of the most painful things in the world to configure. But if there's one thing GNU got right, it's that they never asked you as an end user to install auto tools because the maintainer of the project would run make dist. Maybe Basil, maybe Basil should do that. Why not? Why can't Basil make a tarball we can put on our GitHub releases page? Then people can build that from source and they don't need Basil. So I built a prototype. Um, just a little tiny script. It's like 1,500 lines. Um, it runs Bazel query under the hood and generates a Blake folder with a make file and the source tree symlinks. And it includes all the tools. Like, it builds the world from scratch. It's pretty cool, and you can turn it into a standalone zip. Um, and what's even better is for, like, distros. Distros want to be able to, like, dynamically link system libraries rather than statically linking everything. Having a make file lets you do that. So let's do a quick demo of this tool. I'm going to start off by just w-getting it because it's just one script. That's all you need. And to prove it's tiny... Now, um, let's see what the help says. All you really need is a label. And there's a whole bunch of labels for various targets in TensorFlow. And the one we're going to care about happens to be this one like little C++ library that typically comes with the pick package. So we're going to ask Blake Filer to generate a make file that will build that library. And as you can see, it's pretty snappy. What it just did was generate this Blake folder. And in this folder, you'll notice we have three things. The make file, the TensorFlow source code, and all of its dependencies, including tools like NASM that are used as part of the, part of the building process. And if we want to learn more about this make file, it's about 10,000 lines. It's a very unfancy make file that, you know, tells you how it was created. Um, allows a little bit of configurability. It bakes in some of the security and best practices used internally at Google. Um, and it, it defines everything, everything. Um, typically, typically using like wildcard rules, but the thing, and it's all like, uh, if reverse topologically ordered and cause the thing we're interested in building is actually, it actually comes last 
and it's this thing right here, which as you can see has its prerequisites and you know its build command. So to build this, we can just say that. And no, I'm doing this on a Google Google Cloud Compute Engine 96 core VM because I don't want to waste your time as a viewer. This thing's going to build fast. Um, and while it does that, we have an opportunity to look at the last slide. Um, this Blake Filer tool should ideally stop existing as soon as possible. It would be nice if the if the Bazel team was interested in like rewriting this in Java so it could be Bazel disk. That would be ideal because the TensorFlow team can't own this. This is just an experiment. Oh, and it looks like it's done building already. So like, let's look at that. It's 10 megabytes. We do LDD. See, it only depends on system libraries. All that other stuff it built, like libjpeg turbo, which it, you know, built with assembly and all that jazz, and like these pick libraries, those were all statically linked into the SO file. It figured it all out from the Bazel definition. Um, but let's say, for example, you're, you're a Debian maintainer or something. You want it to link against the system libraries. Well, the solution to that is very simple. Let's just make clean. And then we will, you know, just tell it to override by just copying these things in. Now this one's a weird idiom. The only way you're going to figure that out is just by looking through the make file. You know, I don't think that's going to be too problematic for people because every, everybody understands make file. It's like, it's, it's like holy code and the history of computing. But to go back to this last slide, um, like one of the reasons why this tool shouldn't exist is because, you know, it, it targets makefile because it was the easiest thing to do, but it'd probably be smarter to target CMake because then it transitively supports all these other build systems like Microsoft Visual Studio, probably, or Ninja, or you know, whatever that stuff is, it's probably cool. Oh, so that's done building again. Let's go back to LDD. And as you can see, it now depends on LibSnappy from the system, which I app get installed earlier. So that's Blake Filer. Maybe somebody will find it useful. Maybe it'll just disappear. Maybe it'll become Basil Dist. Who knows? But I'm glad you gave me the opportunity to show it to you and thank you for watching.